Hi guys, welcome to Chrissy's Books. I am Chrissy, obviously. Thank you so much for tuning in this week to Chrissy's Books and be sure to subscribe below if you really um, like my book reviews. So let's jump right in. So this week, uh, it's taken me three weeks to read this book because it is a big book. 720 pages long, but I think it's like 612 pages of the actual story, but there's an intro which I don't didn't really bother to read because I don't like reading them. But this week's book is da -da, A Prayer for Owen Meany by John Irving. So John Irving is a really famous American writer. He's written a lot of books and a lot of them have been turned into movies. And this is my first ever John Irving book. So it's not like a new book it's you know a really old book it was published in the 80s um and a friend of mine recommended uh for me to read this book and i've had it on my shelf for like four years uh so thanks maddie somewhere in australia um and uh yeah so i finally picked it up because we've got all this time during quarantine and you know i finally had the patience to pick up this big big book is so big <laughs> um and it took me a lot longer to read it just because i didn't really read it in my fast pace so i just took my time with it because it's, it's a bit of an intense book um so this book is about um so it's about two best friends owen meany and john Wilwright, and the story is based in new england in um, new hampshire in a small town and one day Owen um, gets picked to play, so they're playing baseball in their Little League baseball team. And Owen, you should know by the way, is very, very, very small for his age. Like he is teeny tiny, that's like his thing. Um, and he gets picked to play last on the field, which never happens. Owen never gets picked, ever, um, because he cannot hit the ball and he's really tiny and he's just not, yeah, he never gets picked. So he gets picked to, um, to play last on the pitch. And then he actually hits the ball and it ends up killing his best friend's mother. So he, it ki he kills John's mother. So that's his best friend. Um, and yeah, so that's basically the premise of the book. And the book obviously tells us about what happened. And some things you should know about Owen is that he is a very like righteous person. So he really believes that he is God's instrument and that um, everything happens for a reason. He doesn't believe in accidents. And yeah, we basically get to discover who Owen Meany is and what that's all about. And that's all written on the back of the book. So when I read that, I was like, yes, I will read this book because I wanna know what happened. <laughs> that's a pretty intense story to write about. So I gave A Prayer for Owen Meany a seven out of 10. Uh, which means that I uh, enjoyed reading this book. It was an enjoyable read um, and I didn't love it, but I liked the story. And I found it really hard to rate this book because there are things that I really liked about it and then there are things that I did not like about it. Like there are some things that I really did not like. <laughs> but at the end of the day, I enjoyed reading the book and I liked the ending and I like I just liked the book. It was a good book given that it's so big. So basically, uh, this book um, is set in two different time periods. So it's told by, um, it's narrated really, by John, who's Owen's best friend. So we see everything through his eyes. It's a coming of age story. So we follow them from a very young age, um, when they're, you know, from 11 years old up until adulthood. And it's told between two different time periods, which is the main one is between the 1950s to the 1960s, and then later on in 1987. So we really, really go through a lot in this book. I think it's like one of the most like well-rounded full stories I've ever read. Like I, I lived this book. Like I felt like I was right there with them. Um, so yeah, it is told really, really well. So some aspects that I really liked about the book was that first of all it's told in a really really interesting time period in the 50s and 60s where a lot happened um the big one being the vietnam war um so we really learn a lot about um what happens during that time um what you know everyone goes through and it really affected every single american out there 
So yeah, I liked that you, you I learned a lot <laughs> in this book about the war that I did not know. Not about the war itself, but like what people go through. Uh, because they obviously the characters the main characters do go through um everything that happens during the war and we get to see from their perspectives what they go through and what happens to them. Um and then also it's told during um the time that um former president John F. Kennedy was elected and also his assassination in sixty three and then also Nixon being um president as well later on. So a lot happens in this book. I mean, a lot. <laughs> it was not what I was expecting. I was just expecting a story about like two best friends and, you know, learning about how he killed his mother, his best friend's mom. But a lot happens in this, like really a lot. Um, it's very political uh, and it was a lot more spiritual and religious than I was expecting as well. Um, and I really liked the friendship between, um, John and Owen, even after that really tragic accident, they just like stayed best friends. They're like brothers. So I really liked their, their friendship in this book as well. And the aspects that I didn't like about it was that it was so, so, so descriptive, like to the point where like, I would actually lose interest sometimes. And I hate skim reading. I don't skim read, but sometimes I would just be like, uh, you know, it's just, it was very descriptive, like too descriptive for me. Um, yeah, like I just did not need to know every single little thing about, you know, what happened and this person's character who's not really relevant to the story. There are a lot of characters in the book, in this book as well, by the way, you should know. Um, so yeah, it was very, very descriptive. <laughs> so, which, <laughs> see how big it is. It's so big. It did not need to be that long, I think. But, but I do have to say, I can see why John Irving would write in that way because you really do get a full rounder story. Um, you can tell that he really likes um, storytelling. He is a very good writer. Apparently, it takes him like four years to write these books. Uh, you can see why. So yeah, you do feel that passion that he has for storytelling. He's a very good storyteller. So that kind of justifies the crazy descriptiveness of this book, um, especially readers of today. Um, who don't really have a lot of patience and like to get to the point of the you know story like a lot of the books that I read are very like quick 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 you know so th this is one of those books that you're going to take your sweet time reading um when you pick it up you know it's going to take you a while so read it during like a long lazy summer or cozy long winter um and it will get you through it is worth it it was so satisfying to read the ending I was just like oh my god I'm done so yeah it's it's worth it to read till the end so yeah, that's basically what I thought about the book. Um, he, John Irving, <laughs> he wrote a lot of famous books. So um, one of the famous ones that I actually, I actually do want to read a few more of his books. Um, one is called Cider House Rules, um, which was a really famous movie as well with a lot of famous actors in it. And uh, The World According to Garp apparently was a big book in the 60s um, that, um, I was told it's a pretty good book. So yeah, I think I might read a couple of his other books, but not now, like later on in life, um, because I need a break from this. So yeah, so he is a very, very famous American writer. Um, I would describe this book as somber and substantial, and it is very emotional. It's meaningful. It's about friendship. It's about spirituality, religion. Um, and it's about American history. It's told during a really, really interesting time in American history. And let me just say something. So um, even though the book is quite religious and spiritual, um, you don't have to be a religious or spiritual person to read this book. Um, and also, I don't get the sense that John Irving is a spiritual book. I, I think it's just the story. That's what I got from the book. I don't think that he is like a super religious book and every book that he writes is going to be like that. Um, the only thing I do know is that he likes basing his stories in New England, so that that much I can I can accept. But yeah, it's just part of the story, it's part of the character, um, it's what makes the character unique. Um, so yeah, it is quite a quite a religious book, but not like it doesn't shove it in your face, it's just that's just what the book's about, that's what the character's about. So yeah, it is it is quite a spiritual book. Um, and you don't have to be spiritual to read it. There's a lot of really fun things to learn from this book. I learned a lot in this book. I'm not going to lie. I really did. That <laughs> I did not know that people went through with the Vietnam War, like, you know, avoiding drafts and the things that they did 
and all the different protests that were, I mean, I know about the protests, but yeah, you kind of learn from different characters um, what people go through in the war. Um, yeah, so it was a really, really just well-rounded story, and I enjoyed reading it. Um, yeah, read it. Definitely read it. So I had a hard time choosing a song for this book because I wanted a song from this specific time period in the 50s and 60s um, that really reflected just that time and the mood as well. So um, I want to thank my BFF Isaac for helping me pick this song for this, uh, this book. And the song that I chose is called um, Fire and Rain by James Taylor. It's a very somber song, and I feel like it really fits the mood of this book. So I hope you do enjoy that. Um, as usual, do subscribe below if you like uh, my book reviews, and that way you can keep up with me. I just can't um, thank you so much for tuning in to, to send it to you guys. Have a great week.